C Q C Q， 各位喜爱业余无线电的朋友们，大家好，欢迎来到翟校长的电台室，我是本期的操作员 Navy One H Y。今天呢，台长和大家分享一个视频，这个视频呢是我在前一段时间在新加坡业余无线电协会当中做过的一个小的报告，一个介绍。这个介绍呢，主要的是针对这个新加坡的 Q S L 卡片局来做的介绍，介绍了一下卡片局的功能，卡片局是如何运作的。以及新加坡的火腿们如何使用卡片局来发送以及接收卡片？那么呢，今天呢想和大家一起分享一下，因为呢，在中国也有类似的 Q S L 卡片局，只不过呢，它的运作方式不太一样，它的功能呢也有所不一样。不过没有关系，之后的一期视频里，我会主要针对中国的卡片局来和大家进行一个介绍。那么今天这期视频呢是英文的。啊，也正好锻炼一下大家的英文听力。好的，那么话不多说，我们就直接来看视频了。Okay, so、uh, good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to introduce to you what is QSL Bureau and how QSL Bureau works. Because I believe、uh, many new members don't know what QSL Bureau is. You may heard of QSL Card, and you know QSL Card is a、uh, like a side hobby of ham radio and.、Uh, Many people are still enjoying exchanging card、uh, after they had a QSO. So first of all, what is QSL Bureau? QSL Bureau, as just now,、uh, we had a few. We had some discussion of, about the Bureau. The Bureau was introduced back in the early days, and、uh, it is a well-established system for sending QSL card in bulk. The keyword here is in bulk because. If you make many QSO, especially today, you work FT8, you can work maybe 100 stations every day. And if you want to send a QSL card to every individual of them, you will go online to check their address. You will write envelope, you will write card, and then you pay a lot to the post office to send your card. So QSL Bureau was created to cut cost and also to send in bulk. Also to also to let the society help individual hands to send card on their behalf. So sending QSL card directly is costly, especially in Singapore. The postal rate is, I think, is significantly higher than neighboring countries. So all the overseas, all the overseas letters are quite expensive. If you really send QSL to every QSL you made, you may. It may cost more than your radio. Yeah. Then, the concept of the QSL Bureau basically is allow you to send your QSL card to the society, and the society will handle the card for you. And then later, you can, if you have replied card, you can collect from the society. Yeah. So why is the QSL Bureau important? Because back in the early days. We don't have internet, and、uh, it is quite difficult to check the address of the recipient. And also, secondly, back back then the letter sometimes the letter also quite difficult to reach to the recipient. And、uh, I did some research while I make this PowerPoint slide. Is that during the Cold War era, like if you send card to Soviet Union, like to the Communist countries, it is quite difficult to reach because they will do a very strict check, and many card gets stopped. Many letter, many letter gets stopped. So, the bureau was the only way to send card go and back from Soviet Soviet Union. So, until today, the bureau is still running, and all and many people are still using the bureau. It's still quite useful. So, most countries with large amateur radio populations. Have a QSL bureau, but not all countries have bureau. There are some countries without the bureau, or their bureau may be only limited to incoming card. They do not send outgoing card, or some countries they just don't have a bureau at all. And、um, usually, for a country, the member can send and receive card from the bureau run by their national society. So in our case, SARS has the Bureau and we run and I, we are the one and only bureau in Singapore. We collect we collect bureau card from all countries for everyone, 
And for non-members, they can collect card from us, but we do not send their card because for all members, we pay membership fee to SARS. So it's a part of the service that we enjoy from our membership fee. Okay, next up, I will just show you how to send your card. So I make this simple diagram to maybe to show you. Let's say if you are person A, if you are person A, you want to send a card to let's say person B from another country. First, you send the card. You send a card to the to SARS bureau. You hand over to the outgoing uh, to the outgoing QSL manager, and other people will give their card to the outgoing manager as well. Then the outgoing QSL manager collect everyone's card, and do a sort. It is sorted by country, and then for each country, let's say for Japan one envelope, and then for US, one envelope, for let's say UK, one envelope. Then they will send each envelope to one country, to their respective uh, national society. And if the bureau from that country receive, they will sort, they will sort the card again. This time it's the incoming QSL manager, they sort card by person. And then they distribute to each individual, in this case, like to D, E, and F. So in this way, the D will receive your card. And if D want to reply a card, it follows the same procedure. Yeah, they will follow the same procedure. So this is uh, a simple uh, explanation of how the card gets sent from one person to another person, one country to another country. And how to receive it is also quite simple. For other countries, uh, because their country sometimes is big and many people cannot come to the society in person to collect card. So usually they will ask the society to mail the card to their address. But for our case, we have a few ways to collect card. First, if, uh, if we resume our physical meeting and members can come to the meeting, collect card from the incoming QSL member, which is myself. So you can come to me and ask, do you have any card? Then I, if you have any card, I will pass them to you. And uh, the second way is for people who cannot attend our meeting. Let's say if you are overseas or if you're feeling unwell and, uh, or for any reason you don't, you don't come to the meeting, you can email me, ask me about how many cards you have. And uh, if you want me to send the card to you by mail, I can send the card to you. But of course you can pay me uh, the shipping fee, like we settle privately. And uh, I'm okay to, and I'm willing to like to distribute all the cards to people because this is my job to dis to distribute all the card uh, on my hand to people. And uh, lastly, if you have a friend who attend the meeting regularly, you can ask a friend to collect on behalf of you. But uh, yeah, but you need to you need to let the friend you need to ask the friend first. Then you need to inform me. So then I will pass your card to that person. And uh, after we talk about how to use the bureau, let's talk about the pros and cons. Because apart from electronic QSL, nowadays still many people use paper QSL. And uh, I personally think paper QSL is a very good hobby. It's like, uh, it's like you pick up ham radio as a hobby, but then you also get QSL card as a side hobby. So it's like two hobby in one. It's a very good thing. So the pros of bureau card, first it's safe cost. It is much, much, much cheaper than send QSL card directly. Secondly, is, to, is you can send in bulk. Let's say you have 100 card to one country, then you just send them once, or you, even you have 1,000 card to many countries, you just send them once to your society, and that's all. You don't need to care about the rest. You don't need to check individual address, because if you have many, many card you want to write, it is painful to check every individual addresses. Lastly, the return rate is actually quite good. However, the good return rate will lead to the cons. First cons is slow. You don't expect the bureau card to be very fast because for a society, we also hold the card. We don't send the card right away. We hold the card. And uh, for SARS, the outgoing QSL manager did a great job of keeping a record. So from the record, we can see that 
you have maximum one year holding period. So after one year, they will send whatever amount of card to overseas. So if we hold the card for maximum one year and the other countries do the same, you may, be, you may receive your card after two years. And that is in a good case, one to two years. In a bad case, maybe five, eight years, I don't know. So that is a cons. You need to be very patient. And secondly, not everyone uses the bureau. Some people are not member of their national society. And some people, they just don't like to use the bureau or they just for some reason, they don't want to use the bureau. And uh, yeah, so you can compare this to direct QSL and maybe you can do a mix. Some card, if they do not accept the bureau, but you really want the QSL, you can send directly. For other people, if you don't want the card, you're not in a hurry or the card doesn't contribute to any award you want to take, you can just make the slow way, use, uh, use the bureau. It's cheap, it's, but it's slow, yeah. And nowadays, QSL card uh, is, it is facing some challenges. Paper, first of all, the electronic QSL are more popular and paper QSL, paper QSL in general faces challenges but for bureau especially. So firstly, computer generated QSL have flooded the system. Uh, for some people, their practice is to make QSL card for every single QSO without checking their validity and without checking whether the other people will accept paper QSL, whether they will accept bureau QSL. They just print, they just make if they make 10,000 QSO, they make 10,000 QSO card and they will just push them all to the bureau. This increased the cost of the bureau and also will increase the work of the, like the volunteers, the QSO manager of the society. Secondly, uh, amateurs has become more environmentally conscious. I think this is a concern to some people because some people say paper waste wood paper is made by wood so wood is made by trees and uh, if we cut trees it is it damages our it damages our environment i personally don't think qsl card is make a very big portion of the paper waste uh, it's just based on the first point that the second point is valid other case in other cases it's just like you co we collect this is same as we send letters or we send postcard I don't think it is make a significant damage to the environment. And certainly electronic QSLs are more popular. For example, uh, eQSL and uh, Logbook of the World, LOTW. And uh, some people use Club Log to check. Some people use QRZ to compare their log as well. So for that, you don't need paper QSL and also some awards such as DXCC, uh, VUCC, work also some of these awards, they now recognize LOTW confirmation. So in the past, people use paper QSL to validify their QSO and to apply for award. But nowadays, logbook of the world can do both. So paper QSL has less meaning to it. And lastly, younger, Younger people are more, let's say, younger people nowadays are more digitized, like they are more get used to the digital stuff than traditional paper stuff. So, yeah, so not many people are interested in writing a paper QSL nowadays. Uh, this also, like, this also is a challenging phase for the general, I think, for general paper QSL. So lastly, I would like to give some tips for sending card via the bureau. So B-U-R-O is the short term for bureau. So bureau is the English word, but bureau is the short term. Usually we can see this in some QSL card or we can see this from Morse code. So in Morse code, if people send B-U-R-O, that means you can QSL via the bureau. First, first one is always to check if the recipient accept bureau card. This is very important because again, from the previous point, 
we want to be environmentally friendly and we don't want to waste any QSL card. So a good way to check is to go to qrz.com. You can see I, I just check a few person that these are some of the QRZ pages I made for, from my QSO a few days ago. And you can see some of them accept bureau, but some of them don't. You should always check after you make a QSO and you want to send card. And if for those who can accept bureau card, I will happily send my bureau card and wait for their return. But for those who do not accept, uh, depends. Sometimes I just do electronic QSL, but sometimes I send direct QSL card. Secondly is to be patient because you know the bureau is going to be slow. Try to avoid sending multiple cards for the same QSO. Even if you wait for, let's say one year or two year, if the card still not come and uh, you should just be patient and hope that you can get one day. If the card really important for you, you want to apply for award or you really, you really like the card design, you can always send email to ask or you can always send a direct QSL card. And thirdly is to write DX and via callsign clearly. DX is the recipient's callsign. Via is the person who will receive your card. This is different. Sometimes, most of the case, you give you QSL to the person directly, but sometimes you need to write a via callsign. For example, some club station, some club station, you need to via the person in charge. Or sometimes people use QSL manager, you need to QSL via the manager. So you need to write both DX and via clearly that so that your card can be distributed to the correct person. And, and next, you may send card in bulk to the bureau of a country. This is uh, for people, let's say if you have many, many cards, let's say to Japan, you can give them to the SARS bureau, or if you feel that you can, if you feel that you try to save the society's cost, you can always send your card to JARL bureau, to the Japan bureau. There, all the bureau address can be obtained from IRE website. So lastly, if you want to give your card to the outgoing QSL manager, you can try to do him a favor by sorting card by country before sending them to the bureau so that the, the QSL manager can take less time to sort your card. And uh, that's all for my presentation. Uh, later, I can, later, I want to hear from your opinion. If you want me to do a talk on how to do QSL card design, or if you want me to uh, give a talk on any type of electronic log or any ham related website, you can later talk to me. Otherwise, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.